Delphi Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Elena Walzek, and Elena is CEO of Calm. Welcome, Elena. Thanks, Cinder. It's so good to be here. I'm so glad you're here. And I can hardly wait to hear all about what Calm is doing these days. You folks do such important work. So Tell us what you're up to these days, please. Sure. Well, I'll let you know that, first of all, we changed our mission statement about almost two years ago. And I think in many ways, shifting up our mission has really enabled us to do even more work throughout the county. So our new mission wow. is to prevent childhood trauma, mm -hmm. to heal children and families, and to build resilient communities oh throughout gosh. Santa Barbara County. And so there's a lot in there. There's three different parts yeah. to the mission. And so lots of different work going on. That is great. Yeah, building resilient communities. That's yeah, just I, what that's I love, powerful. I love about the mission is that we have the preventing, the prevent yep. childhood yep. trauma. And now, I don't think most people know this, but about 50% of our work at Calm is focused on prevention of childhood trauma. So really supporting families where there may be stressors or risk factors, but before anything has happened and we can lean in and build on their strengths and provide them skills and education to be the best possible parents so that they have a healthy family and doing all that work through prevention um, as early as when a, a woman is expecting and when before a family even has a baby. So we can do home visits, we can support a mom if she has mood disorders after giving birth and really supporting them through those transitions all the way up through early elementary years. And then we have the healing children and families part. And so I think that's the part that most folks think of for CALM. It's mm -hmm, providing mm -hmm. treatment, evidence-based treatment and evidence-based therapies to families and to children mm -hmm. if some type of trauma has occurred in that family. Mm -hmm. And then the building resilient communities mm -hmm. part to me is the, some of the most exciting where we've realized that we need to move beyond the walls of our three offices and really get into the community because so much of the trauma that children are experiencing may not be known, it may not be identified, but if we can go where, to the, where the children are and where the families are, so that's pediatric clinics, that's preschools, elementary schools, after schools, if we can go into those settings and provide supports to kids and families, we're gonna reach many more families that are in need. That is great. So can you give me an example of how you do that? Sure. So we've, um, in the resilient communities part of things, I'd say probably a conscious effort over the last 10 years to really embed in other settings, in educational settings or in healthcare settings. So in the educational arena, we've been in preschools for about 10 years now. We're in 25 different schools. We just moved into our first uh, North County-based preschool. We're partnering with the Santa Maria Y, which is very exciting. Wow, that is exciting. And we have a therapist, which we call a mental health consultant, embedded in the preschool. And they're there in this the same model that we're using now in the nine elementary schools at Santa Barbara Unified. And it's a slightly different model where our consultant, again, they're all therapists, are there really to support the teacher and helping mm. the teacher to understand some of the behaviors that a child might be presenting yeah. with as responses to trauma. So if a child's really having trouble lining up to go to recess or a student is really having trouble sitting still in circle time, maybe they're getting really disruptive. It may not be that they're trying to make that teacher's life horrible. It mm -hmm. may be that something's going on at home and they don't have the words to verbally express it and they're acting it out in behaviors. And so helping those teachers think about strategies to really support all of the children in that classroom. And it's a really lovely model because it works for two and three year olds, but it can also work all the way up through sixth grade and probably beyond. But we're doing it preschool through sixth grade right now. And um, it's really 
really changing lives and really connecting families with resources in a strength-based and very non-threatening way so that families yeah. can access support. What a powerful approach, training the teachers. Mm -hmm. And teachers are some of the most stressed out professionals. They're dealing with a lot yeah. Yeah. and they have academic, rigorous academic standards, but they're also dealing quite literally with the mental health issues that are showing up in their classrooms and sure. for the teacher to be able to balance all of that one of the role of our therapist is to really provide support reflective practice for that teacher mm -hmm. we're even doing some support groups for teachers in some of the elementary schools and in the preschools giving teachers a space to talk about what they're dealing with because they're the children that they're, they're teaching are coming to school with a lot of really heavy issues anxiety levels are going up for students, depression levels, feelings of isolation, bullying, even at the preschool level some of that's Gosh. happening already. So we're there to really help teachers build the best possible connections they can with their students because that's going to help those students thrive for the rest of their lives. Gosh, that's very so exciting. It's pretty great. And so you, um, I would imagine, collaborate with a lot of different organizations and Agents, in addition to the schools. We do with preschools and schools. Another area of the resilient community building is this partnership in pediatric clinics. So mm -hmm. it's been a partnership of CALM, the Santa Barbara Neighborhood Clinics, mm -hmm. and UCSB is doing some robust evaluation. And okay. we're uh, starting to screen for what's called ACEs, which is an acronym for mm -hmm. Adverse Childhood Experiences, because there's research that shows that the more adverse childhood experiences just mean early traumas, early mm. adversity that a child may experience. So that might be physical or emotional abuse, sexual abuse, it might be neglect. It could also be living in a household where there's domestic violence, mm -hmm. or if a parent has a substance disorder or a mental illness, anything that disrupts that connection between mm -hmm. the parent or caregiver and that child. And the more of those experiences that happen in an early in early life can lead to negative health outcomes later in life. So things like stroke, cancer, heart disease, Golly. the more early adversities, the more traumas, the more likely those things are going to happen later in life. And so what we're trying to do by embedding uh, in pediatric clinics, and it started with the neighborhood clinics, we're now partnering with the Carpinteria Public Health Department, and we're hoping, we have a meeting in a couple weeks with Sansom where this might be something that we could be screening wow. with all pediatricians that if there are these early adversities at the well baby visits, counseling and educational supports can be provided by a calm therapist to support these families right there and then when they have this newborn. That's just incredible. It's, it's changing pediatric practice, really, for a doctor it, to talk to a family sure. about trauma just like they would about lead paint or installing a car seat. It's just normalizing that all families can struggle. And unfortunately, there's consequences if the struggles turn you yeah. know, in a certain way, but that with supports, families yeah. can get help. And so it's really quite remarkable. Calm has really grown over the... And ch and changed over the years. Yeah, again, like I think really investing in a lot more prevention and yes. early intervention and just realizing that if we want to move the needle on mm. this issue and we want to have healthy, strong families, the more we can support families with education. You know, I'm a mom of twin daughters and you don't get a manual of how to parent. <laughs> yeah. You know, you learn how to parent based on how you were parented and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good. So if we can really support families and just meeting them where they're at and yeah. without blame and shame, but just helping them to be the best parents they can be, yeah. that's going to have positive repercussions for our community. So we've really tried to be intentional about shifting that focus. That is just, that's just amazing. So now I'll bet you might have a story you'd like to share with us. Well, I'll tell you just a story that's just come up recently with, in the pediatric clinics um, of a mom who is recounting that she's fighting a lot with her boyfriend mm. and they have a five-month-old infant. Ew. And often the infant is present when this, and it hasn't gotten physical, but a lot of emotionally uh, mm -hmm. abusing language, a lot of screaming, a lot of fighting, a mm -hmm. lot of door slamming. And she is see sensing that the baby is responding. And it's really true that even at five months old, 
that's having a reaction sure. on that little one's development, even though they can't yet verbalize it. Mm -hmm. But they're fussy, he's fussy, he's not nursing, he's having challenges. And so when, when we screened this family, lo and behold, mom and boyfriend both had histories of trauma in their Gosh. life. And so they need support to heal from some of that in order yeah. to be the best possible parents for this little five-month-old that they now have. Gosh. And so for me, that's just really exciting because without this intervention, that stress and that fighting would have continued. Oh, yeah. And that little boy would have grown up with it. But mom and dad are getting support and they're going to change how that looks and really change the response for that little baby. Gosh. And then they're understanding that cycle. Understanding the cycle and, and, and healing for themselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because they're learning more and more that this trauma actually changes our DNA. So it's Gosh. not just past generation to generation through behavior. Of course it is and how we parent. Sure. But when a little five-month-old is having a stress response, their bodies are still developing. So that level of stress yeah. is impacting the brain. Gosh. It's impacting their hormonal system. But it's actually imprinting on the DNA. And that would get carried forward to wow. future generations. So to Golly. me, that is just like You are doing amazing. such good, powerful yeah, work. It's pretty, it's pretty great. And so how long has Calm been around? Actually, uh, so we were founded in 1970. So next year is our 50th wow. anniversary. So we're really excited about that. A lot has changed in the last 50 years. I mean, when we were founded, we were founded... A woman, uh, a nurse, Claire Miles, who learned of a young father, a 19-year-old father, who couldn't get his young son to stop crying. He didn't know what to do. He didn't have any resources. He didn't have any supports. Mm -hmm. And he was, unfortunately, he shook the baby and he, he shook the baby to death. Oh, God. And he didn't know any better. And um, so she learned from that experience. She put an extra phone in her dining room and she and her female friends staffed this warm line and they took an ad out in the paper, stressed parents, please call. And they just talked to other parents. And in the first month they had 30 or 40 calls. And oh, so from Lee. that, which is just a powerful story, I think of one yes, person yes, deciding yes. to take action. Um, but at that point, everyone in this, no, we did not have, there was no child abuse. That was not a problem in this yeah. community. But in that first month, yeah. 40 people called, so clearly there were some challenges, but I think if Claire knew that we were now, almost 50 years later, this eight and a half million dollar agency with three offices across the county and professionalized services, yeah. I, I don't know that, I, I mean, she'd be so happy, I yeah. think, yeah. to know that she started something, but we're really excited about reaching this milestone Gosh. and just honoring all the growth yes. that's happened. God, well, you can be proud of that. And so um, all this incredible work that you're doing, uh, Calm is a nonprofit, 501c3, right? We are. And you have a website, which I know is on the we screen. We do, we do. And so people can go to the website and they can, I'll bet you have a donate now button. Oh, I'm, they can definitely make a they donation. They can make a financial donation. And they can support our work. I mean, it, it's amazing. We do get support from county and state and oh, local great. municipalities, but those contracts unfortunately don't fund the full cost of service. So mm -hmm. a lot of our counseling work that we're providing, we have to raise money to yeah, supplement sure. those dollars. So yes, people can make a donation if they so choose. They can also go on the website and there's tons of resources. Oh gosh, that's there's great. videos for folks to learn about different aspects of trauma. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh, that's good. For teachers or coaches mm -hmm. or anyone who's a mandated reporter, there's information about how you navigate that system. Yeah. Just a lot of resources about our different programs, our different partners, all the folks we work with. So, Gosh, Elena, thank you so much for the incredible work that you do. Hi. And thank you for being with us today. You are so welcome. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.